All right, so get the, imagine your morning commute involves folding away the wings of your vehicle right. and just cruising right into that office parking garage. Nice. That's the future X-Pang RHT is shooting for, and we are diving deep into it today. Absolutely. We've got a stack of articles from Auto Evolution, IT Web, Electric, even Aviation Week Network. Wow. And CNEV Post. Covering all the bases. We're getting all angles on this one. Yeah, it's a fascinating mix of sources because you've got the auto world buzzing, the tech sites geeking out, and then the serious aviation folks weighing in. Right. Xpeng Aero HT being a subsidiary of a major EV company like Xpeng. Yeah. It's already shaking things up. They're not some wide-eyed dreamers. They're building a facility to pump out 10,000 flying cars a year. Yeah, that's commitment. And they just did a manned test flight of this crazy thing called the land aircraft carrier. It's like they're skipping right over baby steps. What I find interesting is they're tackling this on multiple fronts. So you've got hmm. the X-5, their tilt rotor aircraft that aims to be like a plane and a helicopter. Mm. Right. But then this land aircraft carrier concept uh -huh. is wild. Yeah. It's like a flying car inside a van. Okay, so break this down for me. What makes the X-5 tilt rotor design so special? Is it just about looking cool? Sure. Because I'm picturing some serious Transformers vibes here. It's cool, no doubt, but mm. there's a practical reason. Okay. Tilt rotors get the best of both worlds. So vertical takeoff and landing. Ah. So no need for runways, but then you tilt those rotors oh. and boom, you're flying like a plane, which is way more efficient for longer distances. So inner city travel is what they're aiming for. Yeah. That lines up with the specs they're throwing around, carrying six people at 224 mile per hour with a range of over 300 miles. Those wow. aren't just joyride numbers. Exactly. Yeah. It's about yeah. disrupting travel as we know it. And they're going hybrid electric with the X5 using a range extender. Yeah which is a choice that sparks some debate. Well, hold up, a range extender. Yeah. But XPeng is all about EVs, right? Why not go all in on battery power? Right. Is this a tech limitation or a strategic move? I think there's a bit of both at play. So battery tech still has limitations. Okay. Especially yeah. when you're talking about lifting a vehicle into the air. Yeah. But strategically, it might be about appealing to a wider audience, folks who are still hesitant about pure EVs especially for longer journeys. That makes sense. Yeah. I guess seeing a range extender on a flying car might be less jarring than on, say, a sleek electric sedan. Sure. Speaking of appealing to a wider audience, let's talk about this land aircraft carrier concept. All right. An EV van with a detachable two-seater EV teal. Yeah. I mean, come on, that's straight out of a sci-fi movie. Right, and they're aiming for a price tag under $280,000. What? Which, considering the tech involved, seems almost reasonable. Wow. Over a thousand pre-orders already tells you they've tapped into something people want. So you drive this van around, it detach the EV teal when you need to fly, and the van also charges it. Uh -huh. That's some seriously clever engineering. Yeah. But how practical is this modular approach, really? Correct. Is it just a cool gimmick, or could this be the future of personal air travel? That's the million-dollar question. Yeah. On one hand, it's undeniably cool and offers incredible flexibility. Uh -huh. But on the other hand, there's the added complexity of having two vehicles maintenance for both and then the logistics of finding suitable takeoff and landing zones. Right. It's not like you can just park this thing anywhere. And let's not forget, this whole flying car revolution hinges on more than just the vehicles themselves, right? Oh, for sure. We're talking airspace regulations, infrastructure, public acceptance. Yeah. A whole bunch of things need to fall into place. Absolutely. It's a whole ecosystem that needs to be built. And that's where XPeng's focus on AI becomes crucial. Okay. This proprietary Turing AI chip they're developing is about more than just fancy features. Right. They're betting big on AI to make these flying vehicles safe, autonomous, and ultimately viable. Okay, so we're talking self-driving capabilities, yep. enhanced safety features, all powered by this Turing chip. Mm -hmm. It sounds like they're building the brains for their flying machines before they even hit the skies. Exactly. They're thinking long-term, creating a platform that can evolve and adapt as the technology matures. And it's not just about flying cars. This chip is powering their autonomous driving systems for their regular EVs, too. Right. They're going all in on AI across the board. Yeah, then that's where things get really interesting. So they're not just building a car company. Yeah. They're building an AI powerhouse. I mean, are we talking about the next Tesla here? Comparisons are inevitable, but XPeng is carving its own path. What's fascinating is that they're not shying away from bold moves. So the range extender decision, this humanoid robot they're developing, it's... Like, they're not afraid to experiment and see what sticks. 
hold on, a humanoid robot? What's that got to do with flying cars? Right. It seems like they're going in a lot of different directions at once. It might seem that way, but there's a method to their madness. Remember, their vision is about AI-powered mobility, and that extends beyond just vehicles. This robot called Iron is also powered by that Turing chip. They're wow. exploring its potential for vehicle assembly, which could revolutionize manufacturing. Wow. Okay, so flying cars, AI chips, robots. Mm -hmm. It's a lot to wrap your head around, but it's clear XPeng Aero HT isn't just playing it safe. Yeah. They're taking risks, pushing boundaries, and that's what makes them so intriguing. Absolutely. But before we get too lost in the tech, I think it's important to step back and consider the bigger picture. How will all of this impact our lives, our cities, our world? Are we truly ready for a future with flying cars? That's the question, isn't it? And as one we'll continue to explore as we delve deeper into XPeng Aero HT's ambitious plans, you know, while these flying cars are grabbing all the headlines, there's this whole other layer to this story that's just as fascinating. I'm all ears. What's got you hooked? It's the AI side of things, that Turing chip we touched on. Yeah. It's not just some generic processor. It's the heart of their strategy. XPeng is custom designing it to handle everything from autonomous driving right. to those robots they're building. Okay, so remind me what's so special about this chip compared to what other companies are using. Is this a case of build it yourself so you know it's done right? It's partly that. But it also gives them control. Look at Tesla. They've poured resources into their own AI chips. Right. And it's paying off in their self-driving capabilities. Yeah. Xpeng seems to be taking a similar approach. Uh huh. They unveiled something called the Kanghai Platform at their AI Day event, mm -hmm. which is built around this chip. Kanghai Platform. That sounds intense. Break it down for me. What does this platform actually do? Think of it as the brain behind their level four autonomous driving ambitions. They're aiming to have robo-taxis on the roads by 2025. Wow. And this platform is a key piece of that puzzle. Wait, level four autonomy for those of us who aren't car geeks, what does that actually mean? It means the vehicle can pretty much drive itself in most situations without human intervention. Mm -hmm. It's a huge leap forward in self-driving tech, and XPeng is betting big on it. So picture this. I'm out late, need a ride home, and instead of calling a regular ride-sharing service, I summon a flying robotaxi that picks me up from my rooftop to futurist. Oh, maybe not as far-fetched as it sounds. Uh. The technology is advancing at an incredible pace, and companies like XPeng are pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Okay, so we've got flying cars, AI chips, self-driving platforms, it's a lot to keep track of, but this robot they're developing, Iron, hmm. how does that fit into the picture? It might seem like a side project, but remember, XPeng's vision is broader than just building vehicles. Right. They're talking about AI-powered mobility, and Iron is part of that. I'm still struggling to see the connection. Help me out here. Think about the potential. This robot is incredibly agile, adaptable, and again, powered by that Turing chip. They're looking at using it in vehicle assembly. Hmm. Imagine robots working alongside humans on the factory floor, doing intricate tasks, boosting efficiency. Okay, now that's starting to make sense. So it's not about replacing human workers, but augmenting them, making the manufacturing process more efficient. Exactly. It's about leveraging AI and robotics to streamline production, mm -hmm. which is particularly important when you're talking about building complex vehicles like flying cars. Mm. It's a bold vision, that's for sure. But with all these different projects, is there a risk that XPeng is spreading itself too thin? It's a valid concern, but they've consistently demonstrated their ability to innovate and deliver. They've achieved some impressive milestones in a short time, and they seem to have a clear strategy in place. So what's the common thread that ties all these pieces together? Flying cars, AI chips, robots. It seems like a bit of a mixed bag. The common thread is their focus on the future of transportation. They're not just building vehicles, they're building a whole ecosystem of AI-powered solutions that will transform how we move around. It's like they're building a whole new world where transportation is seamlessly integrated, intelligent, and personalized. It's exciting, but also a little daunting. Absolutely, and it's important to acknowledge the potential challenges and risks that come with any new technology. We need right. to have conversations about the ethical implications, the impact on jobs, and the potential for misuse. Right. It's not all sunshine and roses. We can't just blindly embrace technology without considering the consequences. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But that's why these deep dives are so important. We need to explore all sides of the story, the good and the bad, to make informed decisions about the future we want to create. Well said. Now I have to bring this up. The range extender in the X5. Yeah. It seems like a step back for a company so committed to EVs. What's the deal with that? It raised eyebrows, for sure. <laughs> and it sparked a lot of debate on the surface. It seems counterintuitive. Uh -huh. 
But if you dig a little deeper, you see the strategic thinking behind it. Okay, I'm listening. Convince me. Range anxiety is a real issue for EV adoption, especially in markets where charging infrastructure is still developing. Right. People are hesitant to buy EVs if they're worried about running out of juice. That's true. Even with all the advancements in battery tech range is still a concern for a lot of people. Exactly. And while Xpeng's EVs have decent range, they're still limited by current battery technology. The range extender acts as a safety net, giving drivers peace of mind that they can top up if needed, especially for those longer journeys. So it's a way to bridge the gap between current technology and consumer expectations. Precisely. It's a pragmatic approach to addressing a real-world problem. It allows them to offer a vehicle with a combined range of over 800 miles, mm. which is pretty remarkable. But doesn't it defeat the purpose of having an electric vehicle if you're still relying on gasoline? Not necessarily. The range extender only picks in when the battery is depleted. For most daily commutes, the vehicle will run solely on electric power. It's a hybrid approach, blending the benefits of both. I guess it makes sense from a practical standpoint, but it'll be interesting to see how consumers react to it. Absolutely. It's a bold move, and it'll be fascinating to see how it plays out in the market, but it shows that Xpeng is willing to experiment to find innovative solutions to address real-world challenges. Okay, so they're pushing boundaries with their technology, but let's not forget the human element. Are we as a society ready for flying cars? What are the societal implications we need to consider? That's where things get really interesting, and that's what we'll explore as we continue our deep dive. All right, so we've talked about the tech, the AI, even robots. Right. But let's zoom out to the big picture here. Sure. If Xpeng and companies like them actually pull this off, yeah. what does a world with flying cars even look like? That's where it gets really exciting and honestly a bit mind-bending. Yeah. Our cities, the way we've built them, it's all about roads, mm -hmm. traffic lights, uh -huh. the ground level, right? Yeah, we're kind of stuck in two dimensions when it comes to getting around. Exactly, but imagine if suddenly that third dimension opens up. Oh, wow. Buildings huh. designed with rooftop landing pads, air corridors instead of highways. Yeah. Our whole idea of urban planning changes. Okay, now I'm picturing scenes from the Jetsons people zipping around in their flying cars. Yeah. But realistically, could our cities actually adapt to something like that? It wouldn't happen overnight, that's for sure. Right. But think about it, skyscrapers could become even taller because we're not limited by how many people can cram onto the streets below. Suburbs might become more desirable if your commute is a quick flight instead of an hour in traffic. But wouldn't our skies become incredibly crowded and noisy? I mean, the thought of thousands of flying cars buzzing around is kind of terrifying. It's a valid concern and something that needs careful planning and regulation. Yeah. But remember, a lot of these EV tolls are designed to be much quieter than traditional aircraft, especially the electric ones. And as technology evolves, we might see things like noise canceling systems or designated air corridors to minimize the impact. So it's not just about building the vehicles. Right. It's about building a whole new infrastructure to support them both physically and in terms of regulations. Exactly. And that's where things get complex. Governments, yeah. city planners, aviation authorities, tech companies. Mm. Everyone needs to be on the same page to make this work. It's a massive undertaking. And then there's the human element, right? Are we even ready psychologically to share the skies with all these vehicles? I mean, I get nervous enough driving on the highway. That's a big one. Mm. Public acceptance is going to be crucial. People need to feel safe. Right. right. And that means robust safety protocols, clear regulations, and probably gradual rollout. Yeah. Starting with specific applications like air taxis or cargo transport. Okay, so assuming we can figure all that out, what are the potential upsides beyond just getting to work faster? What could this mean for our lives? The possibilities are huge. Yeah. Think about emergency response times being slashed, mm. remote areas becoming more accessible, pollution being reduced. Oh. If we transition away from gas guzzling cars, mm. it could revolutionize everything from healthcare to tourism to logistics. It's almost hard to grasp the full potential because it's such a fundamental shift from how we live and move now. That's what makes it so fascinating. We're on the cusp of something truly transformative and it's both exciting and a little bit scary. Absolutely. And companies like Xpeng Aero HT are right at the forefront, pushing those boundaries and making us rethink what the future could hold. Exactly. They're not just building flying cars. They're shaping a new reality. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground today from the technical details to the grand societal implications. It's been a wild ride. It has. And, and I think the key takeaway is that this isn't just some sci-fi fantasy anymore. It's a technology that's rapidly becoming real 
whether we embrace it or not, the future of transportation is looking up. Well said. And on that note, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of flying cars. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and maybe just maybe keep looking up 